Hi everyone, excited to be here despite load shedding and uh, what a challenge has been. My whole team running around here uh, against all odds here we are. So super excited today, we're just waiting to get Peter on the line but super excited to be talking today to someone that I really think is a mover and a shaker and a born natural leader uh, and that's how I I like to look and refer to Peter for Mark. What an amazing person. So we're just uh, going to get Peter online. Um, so what do we do? Uh, Tian, va dracons. There we go. Wants to join you. Uh, let's see. Add and uh, add. Hi. Okay, so we wait waiting still. There's a little bit of a time delay. Hi, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you just pop out of nowhere there, Ed, like on these on these systems, on these all this this new technology world. Uh. I know, Peter, Akbert, and it's crazy. And to add to um, shall we say the pressure of the moment, load shedding. And um, yeah, <laughs> just trying to <laughs> To really um, juggle and we've switched devices you can't believe it but anyway no. Peter I'm so happy to have this conversation with you no, uh, before coming online I just say to everyone that's listening and I hope will be listening to this recording um, the reason why I chose to speak to you today is because you you definitely in my eyes some a mover and a shaker but you are a born leader and we'll get Thank into you. a lot of that going forward. But I think you've got the ability to really influence and, and get the best out of your team. And, and that's mm. really such an inspirational story. So welcome and thank you for taking your time to have a conversation with me today. No, Lindy, thank you so much for the time. And it's always just lovely to chat about, you know, property and about business. I just, it gets me so excited. And, uh, you know, if, if we can, you know, pay it forward and just give a little bit of couple of tips on how we do our things, you know, that maybe could help some others out there, you know, and vice versa. I love to get some inside tracks on how other people are, are achieving things. So more than happy to always pay it forward, you know, give some, give some, um, give it some back, I guess. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And, and listen, everyone that's possibly joining us live, drop us some comment, um, you know, shoot a question or two. Uh, the idea is exactly like you said, Peter, that um, we share some ideas about, I think um, we've got one thing in common and that's our passion for business. And, uh, mm. and, uh, and, uh, and that's what it's about. Uh, just to share some ideas and pay it forward. So Peter, let's, let's dig right into it. So um, okay, great. You started for Mark Property. So you're the owner and the founder of Fermark yes. Properties based in Cape yes. Town. Uh, originally yes. started in the real estate broker, commercial broker just, space, yeah, right? Commercial. Um, yes. So just just give us um, a brief background as to when did you start Fermark and where did the inspiration come from? So take you right back to where it all started if you want to just share some some light on that journey. No, no, no. Fantastic. Yeah. So for Mark Properties, we've been, I opened the doors on the 1st of April, 2018, uh, which is four and a half years ago. I still, I have to pinch myself uh, to still, you know, have the opportunity to do what I'm doing. And, you know, in four, four and a half years is crazy how quick it's gone by. Uh, but I started up in Tiger Valley, uh, Tiger Waterfront area. So I originally come from that side of the world. I went to primary school there and a high school in the Node. So I just felt like the best place for me to kind of kick things off again, because I just know it so well. Um, but before I started up for my properties, I used to work for two very, very successful brokerages, commercial brokerages. And um, I just, I always wanted the opportunity to, to create a platform to make change. And I felt that in the previous companies that I worked for, I didn't have that kind of opportunity and that kind of platform because it wasn't my business at the end of the day. Um, so that was always my plan was to, to be able to start something that I can create a a platform for for people just to achieve just to excel just to to become and try to be the better version of themselves on a daily basis so it's taken a long time and hard work over the four and a half years for us to get uh, our, our environment like it is but it is absolutely electric when you walk into this office you'll feel it uh, it is so real there's no there's no um, there's no bs to it at all 
it's completely just pure passion and uh, it's a real family environment. So uh, very blessed four and a half years have gone by that I've had this opportunity and I just, I'm so excited for the, for the next chapter, for the next five years, six years, 10 years, 20 years of what we can possibly do. So yeah, it's been Absolutely. amazing. Yeah, and, and I, I want to come back to a couple of things you said, Peter, but I, I remember us having uh, sharing a, a wonderful glass, well, might I say, a bottle of wine a while ago, <laughs> and we chatted about where you came from, and, and you didn't say that now, but I remember you sharing with me your story about, um, you know, how you were drawn into your family business growing yes. up. Yes. Um, so I, 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 I can give you some background there. So no, when with us, that journey and, and no, that's hundred percent fine. How did, how did that impact you and the way you look at business? So, um, yeah. just a little bit about where you know those early years. No, that's hundred percent fine. So we were very lucky and very blessed that my my father's a very successful business owner in his own right. He's he's uh, traded in properties for years. Uh, so it's so strange how I would get into it many years later, but he, he, had a, he's a, he has a very successful property portfolio. And one of the properties that he owned was a commercial property um, in Monte Vista. And um, that his tenant was coming up for renewal at that stage uh, many years ago. And he decided that he wasn't going to renew with that tenant. He was going to start a quick spa uh, for the four mm. of us, four kids, my two sisters and my brother and myself to basically to run and to learn on how to lose money and make money at the same time. So that was, that was, our, uh, that was the start of, of my business career, was working um, at the spa with my family uh, for five years, which was most, probably the most grueling and the best experience that I could have ever gone through because I used to work three weeks on, two days off, three weeks on, two days off, and it was, you know, it's long shifts, Gosh. it's seven till seven. It, it, was, it was long, long, long hours, but it taught me how to work, which is... A, it was a phenomenal thing. At that, at that time, I, I obviously wasn't a very happy chap because I was 18, 19 years old and I just wanted to party and I didn't understand <laughs> this whole business concept. And, and, uh, but that was, that was the start of understanding people and um, getting to know what you can actually do if you treat people differently, if you sell products in different position uh, compared to where it normally is. So that, that really started getting my interest about retail, about people, about how people buy the patterns that they follow. And I absolutely, I really started to enjoy that. I won two years in a row, the highest Simba growth. Uh, that's the, so that's the most Simba chips sold in the Western Cape compared to the year before. <laughs> so, so I still, we still won a trip away to the Bazarutu Islands and I took my brother with on the first time. And then the second year when we won it, I gave the, gave it to my parents to go away for the, the, for the oh, trip. That's, that, so, that's such a lovely story. <laughs> The highest Simba, what, what did you call it? <laughs> Simba, Simba chips selling the, the, the highest growth of Simba chips. No, I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of that. Uh, it, was, it was great experience, you know, and that, that's where you learned about taking a, a, a box of chips and putting it at the butchery, how much, how many more units sell compared to leaving it in its normal spot. And, you know, it was just, it was just great learnings about the basics of business. So um, yeah. then after that, my father, he decided to sell up the spa and sell up the business. And um, then we were left, we were sent out to the wilderness. And uh, I was 23 at that time. And I had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't want to go back into retail because I'd held, been held up gunpoint when I was 19 years old uh, by four guys. It was insane. My, my sister's been held up by gunpoint, uh, Cindy. Uh, they also shot a customer, you know, on that robbery. So we had a lot of bad experiences with the, with the, the you know, the, the actual th uh, theft and the armed robberies in the, in the shop. So I decided to go into sales because I'm, I'm fairly good with my mouth. Um, you know, I'm quite persuasive if I've got some time. Figure. And, <laughs> and uh, I went into, I, I sent so many, so many applications of CV out, but I've worked in retail for five years, so I didn't get much love. And uh, I got some opportunity at a call center and uh, I went to work in a, a recruitment agency that was based in the UK, but did all of their back end here in South Africa. And um, that was a great, a great journey and experience for me to go into this kind of world of pure high pace sales, uh, production, 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 you know, and I worked, I worked at three very good call centers um, and I had great exposure from that. I climbed up the tree very quickly. I got made team leader within like five weeks after starting and I got I think, sales manager after four months, three, four months after being with the company. So 
I, I was able to move up because of my experience at the spa in managing people and motivating people from that. So I just planted it into the call center days. Um, and that just gave me massive growth. And uh, I went from the recruitment onto online gambling. Then uh, that was also a call center environment where I took it from eight guys to a hundred. Um, yeah, we were massive production and carrots and pushing, pushing. It was just great exper experience and exposure to go through that. Um, and then after that, I went into property. Um, I joined Sotheby's and I, I went into the commercial property brokering gig. And it was fantastic to see how this world works, how much money is out there and the kind of possibilities and opportunity. And when I looked at my colleagues and um, you know, individuals within the industry, not in our brand, I just saw opportunity. Uh, they were so reactive compared to going out and looking for the business. They were just kind of waiting for it to land in their lap. So mm. all I did was I applied my outbound aggressive sales call center kind of you know, experience and I just started phoning. Um, I started calling every single person I possibly could and offering them commercial property opportunities. And, uh, and we had, I had great success there at Sotheby's. I was, I was able to sell a hundred million worth of property um, by myself there. And then I went over to Swindon Properties and I did another hundred million there. And uh, then I went and I started up for Mark Properties. Um, I, always wanted, I always wanted more um, in the last year in my previous brand. I, I actually became quite, I became quite negative. Uh, I felt lost. I didn't know what was wrong. I, I was making more money than I'd ever made before in my, in my life, but it, it just, it, I, was, I wasn't happy. I wasn't at that happy space. Um, and it was always the longing of, of, of starting my own thing and uh, creating a platform for people to, to become better versions of themselves. Um, and yeah, and that's where from our properties came from. And that's been my focus is it's just creating opportunities for people to, to improve themselves, which has been great. Fira, I'm listening to you and, and I'm smiling because the, the phrase that jumps to my head is you can't keep a good man down. <laughs> and, and, you know, listening, listening to your journey, um, you know, really being a, a, a real good team player, adding lots of value from spa mm. right through to working yourself up through call centers. Um, it was always going to be yourself looking for the next opportunity. Um, and yeah. what strikes me and everything that you've said is, is your nature being very proactive. Yeah. It's like, you know, um, you know, just I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, gosh, would I have survived in the call center industry? And, and, you know, when I think call center, I go, oh, those irritating, yeah, dirty word. you yeah. know, ill-timed calls where, you know, that person really don't want to talk to you. Um, but it's yeah. about making the next call and making the next call and making the next call. And I think it's literally working through those negatives until you get to someone that's willing to have a conversation. 100%. But all in all, it talks about your ability to be proactive. So yeah. that leads me to my question. Um, you know, we all have natural capabilities, natural skills. Um, apart from being a very proactive person, uh, what other qualities do you think have you um, enhanced, developed, that's supporting you in this obvious success journey up till now? I think the most important thing for me and something that I focus on all the time, all the time is empowering people, is putting, putting myself into their, in their shoes because every single one of these brokers, every one of these outbound agents, administrative, anyone in this company, I've been, I've been them sometime in my life. And all I try to do is on how would I feel? How, what, would, what would drive me? What would, what would push me to want to be a better version of myself? So it's empowering somebody and focusing on what their strengths are and empowering them. Just it's literally is giving them more of a voice, giving them more of an opportunity to, to be a better version of themselves. So I think the most important thing in my, in my career and the growth of Mark Properties is putting a platform for somebody and just you are amazing. You know, you've maybe not been, you've, ne you haven't heard it enough, you know, but you can be amazing. You can be anything you want in your life and you've just mm. got to put the platform there for them and just let them go. And then when you do that, you need to encourage them and you need to give them proper feedback and you need to coach them yeah. so that they can just improve. Uh, that's all we want as humans. We just want to be a better version of ourselves and we want to put ourselves around people that are always going to try to pull us up and not down. 
Uh, and I feel that most companies and most places out there, there's a lot of negativity. It's, mm. it's a lot of, it's always negative. Everything's negative. And yes, there's a lot of negative things in business, but don't mm. harp on it. Don't focus on it. Focus on the power of the people, you know, their strengths yeah. and then enhance them. So that's empowering. I think we'd say is my, most probably my, my, my main focus on people. Yeah, your superpower, right? But, <laughs> yeah. but you know, and let's not forget that um, what, I'm, what I'm also seeing is someone that has got very specific goals. Um, you're looking mm. towards the future with a sense of anticipation. What next? Where else? Um, setting yourself to task in terms of, um, you know, achieving the next one. So I, I think that leads me to my question. Um, when you are looking for... To, to appoint people to your team. And I mean, I've seen your team. Your team is your holy grail. I mean, you yeah, absolutely I understand. understand the power of achieving amazing things, working through people. Um, so yeah. what are some of the qualities? Um, you know, is there a process that you go through in selecting? Right. Because and that's, that's the key, eh? getting the right people uh, to join you on this journey. Yeah, there's everything about business is people, you know, and if you don't focus on your people and, and bring in the right people on, you are putting yourself at a massive disadvantage. So mm. I, I focus on two att attributes of a person. Number one, ethics. I do not bend there at all. We do not, there okay. is not, there, there's no shortcut in business at all. You do the right mm. thing always. Even if it costs you money, you do the right thing. So ethics is number okay. one. And then second is the fire. What ah. makes that person get up what, what is the fire? What is the real thing in their life that they're striving for? And most people don't even really know that, or they don't even take some time and actually think clearly what they want. And your fire will change. What you want in your 20s compared to your 30s, compared to your 40s is gonna change. But as long as you focus and you, and you, and you enhance on what you actually want right now, and you focus on that and you verbal about that, that's the stuff that brings you up in bad times. And in business, we have more negative, we have more negative moments than positive moments. That's why your environment is, is crucial in a business so that when things are negative, you, the environment pulls that person back up, takes that, just takes it a little, takes a little seriousness off a little bit by having fun with your colleagues. So it's fire. It, the most important thing is ethics and fire is what is going to make that push, person push through the bad times, the negative times. But I promise you, Lindy, most people do not actually sit back and actually think to themselves, what is my fire? What am I actually doing this for? Absolutely. Why am I doing this? I, I, I no, can't agree with you more, Peter. I mean, in coaching business owners, um, I often struck by, um, you know, when I ask them, so why are you doing this? You know, why did you start a business? What is it that you want to achieve? What drives you? And I, and I, and I get this stare into the Ethereum. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> I never really thought about it. And I go, okay, let's start there. But you're yeah. right. And, and, and I agree with you. For me, it's, it's almost dividing people into camps. I know, I know labeling is not completely PC, but you know, if I were to, if, if you were to ask me, what are some of the two obvious um, labels or camps that I can divide people in? There's the, the, the spectators, those that sit on the, on, on the side watching, yeah. um, being very tentative, um, very reactive, I'll see what comes my way or, yeah. you know, whatever opportunity presents itself. So that's the one camp. And then, then I get the fire starters, you know, the ones that actively participate in life and um, yeah. actively putting themselves out there. It's also like testing yourself, right? Testing your yeah, ability. Sure. Just, um, you know, see what you're made of, but you'll only know that once you jump into the fire and you get, um, to, you know, it's, it's, um, and it's often, you know, um, I'm looking for those people that's got a little bit of scars on their face and yeah. on their mark on their body, because that tells me they've been in the fight. They've got a story to tell. Make I sense? still think that 100%. And it's, to me, the opportunity of, of proving to yourself that you're able to do it is phenomenal. Yes. Most people, yeah. they don't even get that luxury to put themselves in that position. And if yes. you sink, you sink. And if you swim, you swim. And you can fly, yeah. you know, and, and that for me is the most encouraging thing about business. And it doesn't need to, you don't need to own your own business to, to feel like that. You just need to have want more and put yourself out there and then put the time and effort behind it. And the success will come from it. 
And it's not quick, it takes long, and it takes the right people around you, and it's making sure that you have the right supportive system around you. And that's why, again, I go back to my environment in this company. Everything is about my environment. And that's for me too, even when I'm having down days, and I do have them, you know, I'm a positive guy, but some days it gets on top of me also. And what do I do? I just go and sit on my floor, I don't say anything, and I just absorb that energy and that passion. And then it fuels me up, and I'm ready for the next one. So yeah, environment's that, very important. That that's so that's so amazing, Peter. So um, I want to put you a little bit on the spot um, and sure. and just ask you. Um, there must have been you've just referred to it now. Um, you also get your down days. I mean, I do as well. Um, can you can you share with us? one of those, you know, when you know, <laughs> has it been at the supporting them of late, you know, so, so of course the question is, um, have you, you know, a recent down day? And I think what I'm trying to get at is how do you pull yourself out of it? You just said now I'll go and sit amongst my team and I'll feed off their energy. Yeah. But before we even get there, there's a very personal, there's a personal, yeah. um, you know, I think we've got to get, out of our own way in a way, but I don't want to answer your question. So now just, uh, I don't know if you want to share just a little no, bit I of that. No, I don't mind. I've, I've, had some, I've had some health issues in my, in my career in the last couple of years, and I was diagnosed with uh, cancer in my appendix, and it was removed, and they removed 20 centimeters of my colon, and, and uh, I went through a heavy period with the operation and, and the fear of loss, because every single day while you're in hospital, you're waiting for the next results to see if it's spread, to see if it's spread, and every single, so you, you, the mind games oh, that go through, imagine. it is, it is next, next level, but, but it, it literally, I, I mean, I can't, I'm so glad it happened to me, to, to have the, to have that kind of experience, to realize what life is about, and mm. just to get, I, I literally, I use that every single day of my life, it's my fuel. It's my fuel to, 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 to being a better version of myself because at the end of the day is we have no idea how much time we have left. And, yeah, and now true. is now. Now is now. And you can do something right now. And another thing that has experienced this whole experience, I can't control until I know. You know, in life, we always, we always build these walls in our lives. We think mm -hmm. that the worst is going to happen. So we take the brick, we take the cement and we start building it in our mind. Even though that situation hasn't even arised yet, we still believe that it's going to happen and it's this negativity that we keep building up. Take that sledgehammer and smash that wall down because you can only deal with it when you get the results. You can only deal with it when it's in front of you. It's That's the true, only time right? you can deal with it. So yeah. I've really put a lot of time and energy into focus on, on what I can control and I can control my attitude every single day. I can control how much I work. I can control how much I try to empower people. I can control all of those things. Having a sickness or worrying about it coming back, I can't control any of that until it's in front of me. So I've, it's really, it's been, it's probably one of the best things that's ever happened to me because it's just, it's made me a better version of myself. So, and I focus on it all the time. It doesn't define me, it doesn't control me, but it's there. And I focus, I focus on being better, if that kind of helps. Yeah. So, and my no. people environment. And of course, you know, and Peter, once again, listening to you, um, it's like um, the fear of the unknown, um, the possibility of getting sick again, that's not, that's not determining you. Mm -mm. Um, it's more of today and what I can today and what I will today. And again, um, out of that space of power, like yeah. I'll, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll command the moment. Yeah, and yeah 100%. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. I've got, I've got, I've got, I want to talk to you about leadership and, and leadership is something again that apart from business, I think both us, me and you, um, you know, we, we've, we're passionate about leadership because yeah. here's what I'm seeing. Your investment in the team and the individuals that work for you, it's like you are looking towards each one of them as, as having the potential to become an astounding leader in their own right. Because yes. I mean, because the moment someone believes in you in yourself, then you start seeing your own potential. And before yeah. you know it, you could potentially pay that forward and become a leader yourself, right? Yeah, so here's my yeah. question. Do you believe leaders are made or do you believe leaders are born? And how do you, how do you see that? 
<laughs> so it's it's really it's a it's a real tough one though because I think the circumstances and your your upbringing in your environment would either would either you know you either have to it either has to happen or or doesn't now I look back at my life as a youngster I always I always wanted to lead I always want to put myself in front so that I take accountability I was always the captain for the the, the rugby side I was I mean I've always been I've always tried to push as the leader because I just like to take take the lead uh, so I definitely think that a lot of people are born as leaders um, but I think there's a lot of amazing human beings out there that doesn't have such big personalities that but have got leadership qualities within and they just need to put themselves in an environment back themselves more to bring it out I so, so predominantly Linda I think yes I think most guys are born leaders but a lot of them it's it's transparent immediately and a lot of other people still have to unpack and they've got to go through a lot of experiences and a lot of negativity or positivity from that to be able to bring that out of them it's a it's a it's a it's definitely something within because you want to improve somebody around you and not a lot of people want to do that uh not yeah. really want to do that so i do yeah. definitely think we're born with it but not most of us will know about it yet I think, and I agree with you, Peter, and um, for me, it's um, not all of us will become leaders of many, but uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree with me, um, it starts with leading myself. The first person I need yeah. to lead is myself, right? And, yeah, and yeah, then sure. I get to earn the right to lead others. But, you know, um, you know and, and, and there's examples of leaders out there that, um, that's in a position of power but they're not being congruent. They're not yeah. setting the example. You know, they, they're slacking in self-discipline. They're slacking in ethics. I mean, politic, the political environment of I today is a prime example. You know, my, so. my experience in, in, in business is I think 90% of leaders shouldn't be in that position. They exactly. are focused. They are way too focused on themselves and their own outcome than the actual people. And I think that that's what creates the opportunity for any young person or any age person to start a business and focus on the people. Most, most of them do not do that. And that creates the opportunity for us to make a difference. And if you make a difference, people will come because we all want that. We all want an environment where we are empowered and we are focused on instead of the other way around. So I yeah. definitely think 90% of Oaks are not supposed to be where they are in the leadership point of view. A lot of the guys get positions because they've been at companies for a long time. Um, and that just kind of happens instead of actually being proper leaders. So I think there's a huge opportunity for more businesses to be opened, expanded and focused on the people. That's how you can only start to succeed in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and again, I think one's got to earn the right um, to lead. Um, but I, I think what I'm hearing you saying, the innate ability to lead is probably potentially there in every human being, but it needs yeah. to be harnessed, it needs to yeah. be recognized. And maybe mentorship is a is an important one, right? And someone Definitely. in your corner that, that that believes in you. And I think that's what you what you're trying to get re right at from our properties is that proper yeah. mentor cultivating uh, environment. Um, and I think it's also about feeling safe initially, you know, when you mm. test your wings and it's yep. okay to make a mistake, but there's always a safe environment where you can come back to, to yep. debrief and to discuss. Um, so do you guys do that often when there's disappointments? I mean, how do you, how do you debrief mentor the younger ones? Uh, how do a lot you, of how talking, do you do a lot like? of coaching, a lot of coaching, a lot of talking, you know, and the best way in my opinion, always to let the person talk, you know, ask them how they're feeling about the process. What do they think that they should have done at that point? So coach, let them let them bring up the solutions and then just coach from that point of view. So we do a lot of talking. We talk a lot about our wins and our, our losses. Yeah, because it's important for mm -hmm. us to know what works and what doesn't work. And it's OK to fail. We're going to fail. I'm, I, I mean, I say to every one of these guys, it's OK for us to mess up. You know, I'm going to mess up another 50 times by the end of the month. I know it for a fact. It's how we get up and how we how we stand yeah. up and we, we take accountability for that. But at least we're yeah. trying. At least we're putting ourselves yeah. out there. At least we're trying to do something that is different to the rest. So that's the kind of business I want. I want us to make mistakes because that's the only way we're going to improve and actually get somewhere that nobody else is.
So no, I, I want I want those errors to come. You know, as long as they dealt with and as long as they are we're accountable with our with our mistakes, uh, which I think is lacking in the world. People don't take accountability for their errors. Uh, they hide hide behind things, and uh, it's very important for me to have a business that's focused on that. Yeah, I, I like what you say that we've got to fail, and and it's all about not taking it personally, but looking at it as a process of learning. It's complete two different views of looking at failure, right? Yeah, um, yeah, sure. Yeah, if we if we take failing too personal, uh, you know, we might be discouraged to want to try again. But if we look, won't get towards, out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, because I mean, anything can go wrong out there, right? And I think that's that's part of the personal um, positioning that I think is so important. It, when for for youngsters out there, young people, wannabe business entrepreneurs, whatever, wherever you are in life, um, the whole notion that um, we're not complete, it's a process. Um, uh, what is Simone saying? Cannot be more pleased that my daughter has joined this amazing company. Oh, wow. Well done, Peter. There we go. So, again, you yeah, know, impacting youngsters and giving them the opportunity to learn. And that, that must make you I have this warm, fuzzy feeling, I'm sure. I get goosies all the time. I promise you, I get goosies <laughs> all the time. It's, it really is. I'm just blessed to be able to be in a position like this to just empower people. You know, it like really, it, 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 I, can't, I can't wait to get to the office every single day. I can't wait to think on how to improve things. How do I make this even better? How do I empower these guys? How do I get more channels for them? It really is such a, yeah, I'm just extremely blessed to have it. Huh? So it really is a great thing. So Peter, there's obviously, uh, we've just said a while ago that business runs in both our veins and you were always destined to have your own business. I mean, you were always heading in that direction. So apart from your amazing team, uh, what has been some of the real wins for you in um, building for more properties? Um, there must be some personal... No, wow. there's been... A <laughs> There's been some fantastic moments, you know, I, I measure myself every single day, I measure my brand, I, I measure this company all the time against our competitors, and I, I, I'm just so proud to see the growth and the movement of Mark Properties compared to some of the older brands, that's just a personal piece to see how we're growing from our social media platform, from our deal count, from our brokerage, where I've, where I've been able to uh, attract some very successful brokers from some name brokerages that have joined me. So that's been some great moments also. But, but probably my favorite, my favorite success is seeing brokers that have never ever done something in the industry and then they come to Formark Properties and then bam, you empower them. And I've got two of them, two of, two of my top ladies here in this office had never ever sold a commercial property before joining me. They had done a lot of leasing and lots of leasing over years and years of trade, successful ladies in their own right, but then to focus and empower them to start doing sales, and now you must see them. To see somebody come into your environment and you can help them level up. That kind of peacocking, you can't, you, you can't, put, a, you can't put money on it, you know, just to see that self-confidence. Yeah, that self-confidence just, it is phenomenal. You know, yeah. so to me, that's most probably my favorite thing about this company and the biggest wins for me is taking people from environments that they were in previously, that they weren't, they weren't happy and they weren't given the full opportunity to be the best version of themselves and they do it, yeah, and then you see it. Eh? Oh, it's fantastic to see self-confidence grow like that in people. It's really nice. So that's most so probably a big one for me. Is definitely going places and when 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 I visited uh, uh, was it about more than a month ago you mentioned that you also now um, started to do some uh, actively involved in the residential Ooh. in the residential industry so you want to talk a little bit about that oh, I so I felt, I felt, everyone's, I felt. <laughs> everyone's um, information so you're both into brokerage commercial yeah, sure. um, yeah so just a little bit about that now taking cool. on the big guys right <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, we've got we've got thirteen commercial property brokers that are based in the Western Cape. That's from Helderberg to Somerset, where, or from Helderberg to southern suburbs, all the way to Paul. Uh, no, no, not all the way to Paul. We're almost there, Brackenfell. So the end of Brackenfell, uh, CBD, Montague Gardens, all in this 
precinct. So we've got commercial brokers in mo most major areas. And then we've got five residential brokers that joined, uh, two of them joined five months ago. And those first two that have joined me have managed to sell nine residential properties within the wow. first four and a half, just under five months worth of trade, That's incredible. Which, is, which, is, which is phenomenal numbers. And both of those agents had never worked in the areas that they're selling right now. So just to, just to show our FAMARC process on how we do our marketing, how aggressive we are, it works. You know, it's a, we had one of the, one of the newer ladies join us um, in the table view market, um, Anya. So she's, she's just joined the property industry. Got, oh, she's got gears though. So hungry for life. So she's just come into the market and on our first day of marketing for her area, we were able to pick up 10 valuations to be done in one day, 10 valuations to be done. And uh, from those, and from those, she's picked up one exclusive mandate already. And now this is a, this is an agent that's, that's been in the market for a month, not even a full month yet, a month. And she's sitting in a, it's sitting in that position and that kind of workload. So it's just so great to see how our Formark properties process empowers the agents as soon as they join us. So really, really nine properties is phenomenal on the resi side. And then when it, we also started property management, we're not, we, we're not scared at all. We want it all. So we started property management about three weeks, three weeks ago, and we've oh, already wow. done a, we've already done a placement and she sent off another application yesterday. So we're wow. aggressively hitting that market now. So yeah, so we do the commercial side, the sales and the letting for that. And then we do the residential sales and letting for that. And then the property management obviously takes care of the management on both, on both products. So Congratulations, uh, Peter. That's, that's just such an amazing. And I mean, it's like you, you guys are just not holding back, right? There's no, no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't want to put you completely on the spot because uh, we've had some great conversations about behind the scenes, what you guys do. And I mean, that's obviously your IP and I respect that. But what, what I think is important just to mention is, and you've said it just now, we stick to our processes. Yes. Now, I want to take that through to business and um, the importance of having sound processes in business. Um, and, and isn't that just true? You know, it's like we want certain outcomes or certain results, but are we breaking it down to the logical steps? Are we putting in the work? We, we refer to lead and lag. Um, so are we putting in the lead activities that's going to give you the result? So do you yeah. want to just allude a little bit around your focus on processes and, and yeah, systems? Sure. And, and it's, it's like the, your recipe and, and how yeah. that plays a part in your daily success. No, I don't mind giving a little bit of a, a how we do our things. Yeah. So when I started in this industry, I couldn't believe that you had these phenomenal salespeople slash service people that had to do so many different aspects of the business. You have to find the stock. You have to find the end user. You've got to market that stock. You've got to then negotiate the deal. Then you've got to do viewings. But at the same time, you have to look for new stock and you've got to look for new end users. And da, 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 it just becomes a problematic process. And this mm. is why a lot of agents don't stay in the industry because it's, it's just so tough in the beginning to do it all. And you're still mm. learning on what property is and how it works. So it's extremely tough from the get-go. And why, 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 only the really successful agents will push through that period. But you're losing some phenomenal people that just need a bit of a helping hand. So when I started, I realized very quickly that there's opportunity to create more of departments, to create more of an administrative department, a marketing mm -hmm. department, an outbound department, so that, that you have your sales agents slash service agents just closing the deals, relationship mm -hmm. building. That's what we are supposed to do as, as brokers mm -hmm. in, this, in this industry, is just to build relationships and be the middleman and close the deals. So, that's why we, for Mark Properties, we focus on having departments. We focus on the strength for the strength for people and feeding our brokers as many leads as possible so that they can just go and do what they have to do and conclude deals. So it's worked really, really well for us. And we're going to be echoing it. And we just, and as the years go by, we have more and more data. So we understand our processes better and better. So we can, we can, I, we can see where there's opportunity to improve things. I know, I know everything about our outbound process, our marketing. I can even tell you how many LinkedIn requests I've got to send before they accept from our properties uh, um, <laughs> to follow our pages. 
literally like it's 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 a case you've got to measure everything because if you don't measure it you won't know if you're doing well or if you can improve you know like it's well, it's there you go yeah I, and i do know that you you're meticulous about putting together a scoreboard you are absolutely yeah. measuring every critical step in the process yes. to see where can we improve what's our conversion rate and um, yeah, well done on that. And, and again, maybe maybe the uh, call center industry taught you a little bit about that because massive, we've got massive, <laughs> massive. I can I cannot <laughs> quantity driven, right? I mean, you're going to make a hundred calls, you're going to get three yeses. So you've got to go through the hundred calls to get to the three hundred calls on a on a bad day. We punt out two hundred calls. Yeah, a hundred days on a bad day. Do you know what I mean? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that's phenomenal, <laughs> Peter. That's yeah. phenomenal. Um, I, I, I'm not someone that dwells on negative stuff or a week, you know, if you want to report, uh, rec, uh, refer to it as failures. But I've got to ask you do you have any specific regrets up till now? I mean, you're still fairly young. Uh, I'm just saying that. So you've still got a life ahead of you. But any regrets, anything that you I think, think should have done that? Personally, I've got some personal regrets that I, you know, I mean, I had a situation and, a, and I was involved in a corporate environment a couple of years ago. And uh, there was a very, I was very close with my leader at that, at that time. And uh, this is my biggest regret. I'm telling you from a business point of view is that, that this leader was just phenomenal. He empowered me so much. He really, he's by far the most instrumental person I've ever worked for in my life, you know, and there was a moment where that man was challenged and I regret not standing up for him at that stage, at that moment in my life, I regret not having the, the guts to stand up for the right thing. And uh, years later, I reached out to him just to make, just to see if I could take him for a beer, just to apologize uh, for me being, not a great version of myself on that day. And that will sit with me forever that I, I didn't stand up for what I believed at that stage. So that is most probably my biggest regret in my, in my career. I've made a lot of mistakes, but those are okay. You know, um, a moment like that where you get tested and I should have stood up for what I believed, I regret that tremendously. And that's why, that's why again, then I, I, I empower myself to focus on doing the right thing all the time. I don't ever want to be, I don't ever want to feel like that again in my life. So not standing no, up I, and doing the right thing. Yeah. Good for you, Pete. Uh, and I, and I see Lisa saying so proud of Peter for Mark, our capiti for Mark. This is only just the beginning. So it sounds like you, you've got a growing fan base, myself included, Peter. Um, <laughs> so I've got to ask you, I've got two more questions before I suppose, Sadly, we've got to um, uh, finish up. Um, my first question is, um, so, you know, and I, and I think that's unfair, but what would be a B-hack for Peter, for Mark, though, that big, hairy, audacious goal? I mean, you know, what, what is that? Uh, I mean, or is, I there more, is there more than one? I, mean, <laughs> I tell you, I can't switch off. My brain can't switch off. My my ambitions just get bigger and bigger every single day. So I, I mean, I just think that we have such a platform that is empowering so many people and not near enough. So why not make that platform bigger? Why not create more opportunities for people to be more empowered? I, I have that ability. I need to do it. I must do it. It's, it's just, it, it has to happen. So I think that that's my biggest focus is just creating more platforms for people to improve and be better versions of themselves. Property, I love property, but it's not everything that I wanted to do. I don't even, I mean, years ago, I would have never even told you I wanted to start a property brokerage company. And I still don't know what I want to do in the next five years or 10 years from now. You know, that's the truth behind it. I just want to keep on having the opportunity to be able to create more opportunities for people. And there's so many different, there's so many different ways that this business can go. There's so many off spilling parts of the business that we can get involved with. I want to create more opportunities within for the brokers and the, for the leaders to be, become partners, uh, partners with me in other, um, uh, you know, other uh, adventures. So there's so many, there's so many, you know, I'm online every day and I dream big. So at night, I like to dream. I like to sit and I like to research on different industries, markets, and I like to just think bigger, not get stuck in the day-to-day -day 
focused like I am at the office on at night, I like to dream big. So no, it's, it's difficult for me. Eh? I, I'd like, I want to grow this into a very, 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 very big property group. And then uh, I want to create other opportunities off that also. Yeah, and, and um, uh, you know, I'll be watching closely and, and I want to put up my hand to say, Peter, maybe we should be looking at collaborating on some of those opportunities. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah, it would be um, amazing. Hi, Lisa. Um, hi to you as well. Peter, my final question. Um, yes. You know, and, and I suppose it's not an easy one to answer, but then or maybe it is. Um, people listening to us watching this video, uh, what, what would be some of the tips you'll give to anyone out there wanting to do their own thing? And, and you know, I'm not just talking side hustle, you know, or, um, but really um, putting oneself out there and starting a business uh, and a business that's profitable and sustainable. Uh, because, I mean, that's the real test of a business is yes, can you sure. survive the first thousand days? And, I mean, you're yeah. into four years. So you have, yeah. obviously... But any specific tips that you'd like to give and share, what's important, what, should, what are some of the pitfalls? Just let us into your mind uh, with regards yeah. to that. You know, I think it's really important that you surround yourself with people that are going to empower you to, to want more, to, to become, to, 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 to try to achieve more. And you just got to back yourself. You know, I think the most important, the scariest thing when I started up for more properties is, I was walking with my colleague, still walking in town there on the cobbled streets. And, you know, this, this colleague of mine just said, but Peter, why don't you start your own business? You know, you are your own brand. And I just stood there for a moment and I thought to myself, she's right. Why don't I do this? Why can't I do this? And the self-belief started to, to mm. kind of just, it started, you know, I started, I can do this. I can physically do this. And uh, was I, boy, was I wrong in the first couple of months, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> I, went through, I went through some emotional up and down from that point, you know, because once you go and reside and you go and start your own thing, then you've got to do it. And now yeah, you have no it. idea. You have no idea how to do this, but you're going to do it. You know, so uh, the like first thing. faking until you make it. There's no safety net, but you just bulldoze on it. <laughs> you just go. So the first couple of months was really, really tough. And you're going to go through that. You're going to be scared. You're going you're gonna to self-doubt yourself. You just got to push through. Get yourself a proper supportive system. That might be your partner, that might be your family, that might be your best friend, or that might be the mirror that you look into every single day. That's what I leverage off every single day. I look at myself and I'm, are you happy? Is this the best version of yourself today? And I'm accountable to myself. So just put yourself in the right environment, get, get people's insight, just talk, share your, scare, your, your scary story, like how you feel. If you're scared, talk about it. If you're excited, talk about it. So it really is, it's just making that, it's just jumping that leap of faith to give yourself a go, you know? And then yeah. you just got to stick through and then just work hard, put the hours in, dream big. You know, it's, it's the reality of it. It sounds so corny, but it's not. You can do anything that you want in your life. You've just got to put the time and effort to it and believe yeah. in yourself. Yeah, and so. I like what you say, Peter, and, and it's like, you know, um, let your failures speak towards your success, you know, and mm. I, I, listening to you, I also laugh because, uh, you know, I've, I've fallen on my face so many times, um, you know, and, and looking at you four years into for my properties being an amazing success, but it's taken your whole life to, to bring get there, you yeah. to this, you know, and I think um, often when we look at successful people, they look like an overnight success, right? But it's in, in it's conversations like this where you get to unpack and understand what are some of the challenges that person uh, went through to get to where they are. So it's really hustle, hustle, hustle. But I, 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 I want to echo what you said. It, it starts with self-belief, right? And yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember years back when I wanted to start my own guest house and I showed with good, great pride, I showed the property off to some friends and their only com um, comment was, what? Who would want to sleep in a guest house in Kempton Park? And immediately, you know, I was so deflated. Um, but I got over myself very quickly and I decided, well, that might be your opinion, but it's not going to be my reality. So again, that self-belief. Eh? Uh, I call those... Lindy, I call those people crabs. 
you know, the crabs will always pull you back in life. They will, they don't ever want you to achieve because they don't yeah. have the guts to put themselves out there. So they will always yeah. talk you, they will always put a negative spin on everything because they don't yeah. have the self belief themselves to give it a go. And even if you fail, so what? At least you tried. At least you've yeah. learned so much about yourself in that period of time so that you're ready for the next situation. It's exactly, it's a great point, Lindy. All of these years that I've gone through from the spa days to the call center days, it has been the experience, even the experience I went, it's just been phenomenal. And it's created a, a robust person to take all my experience and plug it into people, you know? And yeah. I worked for corporates and I learned how not to treat people. I literally yes. learned how not to treat people, yes. you know? Yes. And it, you take that and you just turn it upside down and you focus on yes. the human beings. So yeah, I, that's true. Yeah, you know, it makes it makes one a a complete person, Peter. Right, and you know, yeah. and it's and once you've gone through all these situations and experiences, it's so much easier for others to relate with you and you to relate with them because you can yeah. really say, "Hey, I've been there, and this is what I did." Uh, or yeah. yeah, that sounds familiar, but maybe you want to consider this or that. So we can't yeah. get to share that story if we've not gone through it so it's like yeah, a sure. complete different perspective to embrace the hard times and to just yeah. get on with it and it i think um, yeah it does and i think to protect your own vulnerable self image in the beginning like a tiger and don't let anybody else's opinion become your opinion of yourself um, yeah 100 percent Peter, um, is there something that you'd like to brag about before we leave? <laughs> What's been some of your amazing like standout wins of your team in this month alone? Oh, we've just had uh, this month, uh, September 2022, is our second highest trading month since I started, which what? I'm super stoked about. I'm super, super stoked about. And uh, yeah, I just, I pinch myself, you know, for, for where we are and where we're going. Um, we've launched some new incentives. We're giving away a, a, a MSC ship cruise to nowhere um, in January that we're giving away that at the end of December for a trip in January. So that will push our uh, referrals to our property management sector. Okay, so we need, we need production there as quick as possible. And then we've also launched uh, three sexy weekends away. Uh, incentive wow. for our for our team, one for a commercial agent, one for a resi agent, and one for the outbound agent. So that also just improves production and also gives them something to work work towards extra. Uh, so that's always a lot of fun at this office. And we got our new beer that launched. I can actually grab one of those beers to show you what they look yeah, like. Do show, do show a beer yeah. for more properties beer. <laughs> oh my gosh. We, we are all about we are oh, all about fabulous. branding yeah, at Formark Properties. Oh, so if you, do, if, you, if you do a successful deal with Formark Properties, you'll be getting one of those packs sent to you. Just, just, just say, just, just say. <laughs> I, just, I just love that, Peter. Um, and you know what? Um, you're having so much fun. And, and that's contagious. Eh? Fun, yeah. success, um, it's contagious. Listen, Pete, thank you, Petey, um, you know, as, as you are fondly known in the market out there. I can just say to the big oats out there, watch out, Petey is coming. Um, and, Pity, you know, Pity um, Pity well, yeah, well <laughs> deserved. So, Peter, uh, from my heart, thank you so much for, for spending some time just um, exposing your soul. But then you've always been known to be an, a very generous person in terms of time and everything that you give away. Thank you so much. And no, I pleasure. really appreciate the um, spending time with you and look forward to celebrating lots and lots and lots of success going forward. What an amazing no. success story. And no, I'll, you, I'll and join in those celebrations. Uh, I you think they're in done, surely, right? Yes, yes. No, Lindy, thank you so much for the time and the opportunity for me to share my story. And I can't say it more. I love to pay it forward, share some of my stories. Uh, if it helps, it helps. Uh, all I can say is just believe in yourself and more importantly, believe in your team. I can tell you now, I say it in every one of these chats I have, your answer to your success is in your office, it's with all your amazing people. Just give them a platform to be a better version of themselves, support them and, and help them through that process and you'll see how they'll, the success just keeps climbing. I can't wait for the next five years, can't. <laughs> so, um, and neither can I. <laughs> Thanks, Pete, you must, uh, Thank God you bless. So much, um, 
I'm Thank wishing you. you all the best. Thank you so much. And, Thank um, you so much, sir. You're welcome. And to everyone out there looking to do and, and to put yourself out there, good luck. Um, start at the beginning. Start with a dream. Uh, put yourself out there. And, you know, why not? Give it a bash. You'll be pleasantly surprised. Surprised. And yes, then just to, just to finish it off, if you need any property-related assistance for Mark Properties, i got to throw <laughs> it. i got to throw it out there. I've got to throw it out there. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course you should. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you Thanks. so much, Lindy. Thanks, sir. Okay. Bye. Bye.